Hello everybody, my name is Kira Tai. I am a 31 year old entrepreneur and licensed cosmetic tattoo artist in Washington DC of seven years. If this is your first time meeting me, please check out my page, DM me for a consult if you like my work. But today I'm actually not gonna be talking about eyebrows or permanent makeup, but something much, much more dramatic that I did to my face. But before I get into what I did, I just wanna throw out there that I'm doing this video almost entirely makeup free. Other than my permanent makeup on, I only have on tinted moisturizer because I really want you to understand the fullness of my results. My eyebrows are four years healed, my eyeliner is three and a half years healed, and my lips are also three years healed, and they are holding up very well, although I am desperate for a touch up. But back to the purpose of this video, as a cosmetic professional, I also invest into my own industry and my own aesthetic, and I have done so much from lasers to filler and Botox and all kinds of skincare regimens. But last year I made one of the biggest moves in enhancing my own aesthetic and I got plastic surgery for the first time. Now hopefully you can't really tell what I've had done because I wanted it to be very, very subtle work to just rejuvenate some of my volume loss. So the procedure I had done is called facial fat grafting and I did it out in Beverly Hills with Dr. Gary Modicky. So I hope you're intrigued uh, and let's start off by talking about what facial fat grafting is. Facial fat grafting is just another form of fat transfer and usually most of us are pretty familiar with fat transfers when it comes to things like BBLs or breast fat transfers, where we liposuction fat from one area and then put it in another area to sculpt or restore volume. And I essentially had that done to my face in a very, very small natural amount. But why did I have this procedure done? Um, as I was approaching my 30s, I started to notice mid-face volume loss, essentially. And I had been maintaining this with fillers to enhance my aesthetic, um, but then the pandemic happened and we couldn't get access to all the beauty treatments that we needed. And a lot of my uh, work had sort of dissolved and I felt like I was really starting from square one with a couple of problem areas. So as I was fantasizing about all of the beauty procedures I needed to catch up on, my research actually took me towards facial fat grafting as a pretty magical solution to like all of my problems all at once. So I'm definitely still an advocate for filler, especially if you just need a quick fix or you want to stick with less invasive options than needing surgery, you'll pretty much get the same results with a really good injector but some of the benefits to having surgical fat grafting were things like longer term results. Using my own stem cells sourced from my own adipose tissue to rejuvenate my skin from the inside out. Also, because I had lost volume in multiple areas, I would have needed multiple treatments of filler, which can honestly get just as expensive as surgery because you get charged per ml and a good injector is expensive. And at one point I ended up having a not so fun experience with tear trough filler in my under eyes. I couldn't, again, stick with the same injector. That might've been my first flaw. And I ended up getting overfilled and having this effect called the Tyndall effect, where filler is superficially placed under your eye and it tends to blanch out the skin even more, giving a little bit of a raccoon effect. And it also didn't move well with my smile when I would you know, cinch my eyes like this. So. I was just kind of looking for other options at this point. Ideally, this was going to be longer lasting and more cost effective and have roughly the same aesthetic, but I'm also taking a bigger risk going under general anesthesia. Some other cons to getting surgery is honestly gonna be the downtime. I looked a little weird for a little while, but to me, I thought it was definitely worth it. Also, the need for antibiotics totally messes with your gut, um, and that was a little unpleasant. And then one final thought on one of the cons of facial fat grafting is the potential for your metabolism to actually metabolize through all of the fat and not get any results. This risk was brought to me, especially as somebody who has a very active lifestyle. I decided to go for it anyways, and I got really lucky that my results maintained. Also, my doctor, Dr. Modicky, ensured me of his specific method of sourcing the fat and purifying it by not using a local anesthetic at the area that they were sourcing it, allowing the tissues to stay more alive as they transfer. And I thought this was really cool because as you guys know, I love being really involved in the scientific process, understanding what makes certain doctors honestly superior with their technique. And it shows a level of expertise I feel like we're missing in the cosmetic industry. 
So overall, despite the risks and the potential cons, um, I can just tell you the ending of this video, I will be doing it again because I love my results so much. Next, let's get into how I found my surgeon. Doctors all around the world are doing new and innovative procedures. It's kind of hard to tell what works and what doesn't sometimes, what will work on one person but not work for another. And my philosophy through permanent makeup held true through my philosophy with researching plastic surgeons is finding someone who has multiple healed results that you can relate to in yourself. So beyond just stalking him on Instagram for a few years before deciding, um, our meeting was just kind of written in the stars and I'm like an astrology crystal girl and that's just kind of my intuition talking but it turns out that I have been a fan of Dr. Monikies for like 15 plus years because I used to watch his surgeries on Dr. 90210 back when I was a teenager and I actually remembered one of his more famous cases with a pair of twins who got rhinoplasties and I just thought this was like immaculate work to do a thing and then to do it twice and then have them look, you know, so good, so similar and so much more themselves and how they felt. I just knew that this was meant for me. I think great aesthetics is not necessarily about changing anything, but it's about rejuvenating enhancing, maybe even replacing things that you might have lost, restoring your self-confidence so that you feel more like yourself. So eventually I got the guts to ask for a quote. I put down my deposit so fast and I was flying out to LA before I knew it to meet the man himself. Meeting Dr. Madiki was just further affirmation to me that I had chosen the right doctor. And I think it's really important to have good feelings when you meet the doctor that's going to literally be operating on you and in charge of your face. He's such a chill guy. He was just as detail oriented as I was. We formulated a plan. His desk staff was all really great. A lot of the people in his office had had work done with him. Uh, so I found that really assuring to ask people like, well, hey, what have you had? And everyone just gave me all of the information I could possibly ask for. And I'm a Virgo, so I need all the information I would prefer to have more of it than less of it. And so I really drilled a lot of people with questions. <laughs> I even got extra anxious and I asked Dr. Monty to come back into the room to reassure me. He totally did. Um, and I lost like 80% of my anxiety from meeting him and having that consultation alone. And again, I just knew in my gut that I was in the right place at the right time. And this is very, very important, guys. Trust yourself, trust your surgeon. This is not my first rodeo, but it was certainly my biggest. So the areas that I actually had treated and why. Um, my biggest area of concern was honestly my forehead. Uh, I moved this thing around a lot. I've lost a lot of volume in my forehead. It's kind of weird to have your forehead feel thin and way overactive and just kind of the thing that ages you. And it's not something you can readily get filler in. I researched, I researched a doctor who was willing to put filler into my forehead, couldn't find it, saw some lady doing it in Australia, not gonna fly all there, all the way there from Washington DC. Um, so that was my biggest area of concern. And as you can see, I have a nice smooth forehead. Now my temples aren't super duper hollow and a lot of like the overactivation that occurs in my forehead is definitely smoothed out from the fat grafting. Um, next, I talked about earlier my experience with under eyes. I had had filler here before that didn't quite go the way I wanted. Um, and you can see my under eyes, I almost don't really need concealer except for when I'm like touching up my makeup. Um, it sits so, so well. It blends flawlessly with my cheeks. And when I smile, when I do have facial movement, it moves with me. Some other areas that I had treated are my cheeks. They are just nice and full. I had wonderful experiences with cheek filler every single time. It gives me a little bit of a lift and I personally like baby fat cheeks. Um, and then my lips I also had done and I also had lip filler experience that went really, really well. Um, I've got baby lips and so I just wanted these uh, treated with my facial fat grafting in addition to everything that I was getting. And then this last one, this is a real kicker for me because I think I'm like the first person of Dr. Monarchy to, to do this, but I had my nose fat grafted. Now, 
Let me get into detail about this. So this is my good side. She slopes really nicely. She's got this nice little button. Love her, right? We've all got the good side. And this side used to be my bad side. Now, I still have a little bit of a dorsal hump, but it doesn't really bother me. But the part that did bother me was the downturn of my tip. And it is much more balanced because I actually had some fat grafted at the tip of my nose to give it that nice button effect on the other side as well. So my bad side isn't nearly so bad anymore. She might even be cute. So that's essentially a mini rhinoplasty, but without a break. I just had my nose sculpted. And then finally, um, I tacked on, right before we even went to my procedure, nano fat stamping. And this is actually a topical procedure where they purify the fat that they're already sourcing for your fat transfer, um, and then they stamp it onto the surface of your skin. So you're really getting treatment from the inside out with your own fat, but then purified stem cells from the adipose tissue on top that rejuvenate your skin topically as well. And this looked really scary post-procedure because it's almost like a vampire facial where you just like wake up and there's like blood everywhere. But within days, I noticed the quality of my skin improving. I still feel like I have the benefits of that a whole year later and like my skin type has just like changed. Um, and though I do still get cystic acne, overall my appearance is smoother and I would say I would prefer the results of it to lasers. Okay, so the day of surgery, what happens? Um, you go in, you get prepped, you have one more talk with Dr. Madaki. Uh, he really calmed me so much. Again, his staff is so wonderful. They roll you back in there and the anesthesiologist was like, take three deep breaths and I probably passed out by the second breath. Um, and I woke up, I don't know, it seemed like a flash later. Uh, and I don't personally have trouble with anesthesia, but I feel like that varies from person to person. But when I woke up, girl, I was like ready to work out. And the nurse had to tell me to chill and sit down. <laughs> the real question I'm sure you're wondering is what the fuck did I look like? Um, and I looked puffy and bloody, but I was totally expecting this. Uh, and it actually like wasn't that bad. Like once they wiped all the vampire blood off, it, it was fine. I just looked like I had been like overfilled. And what's going to happen, what I, what I knew was going to happen was a lot of that fat was going to, to kind of chill out, to settle. I was gonna lose a certain percentage of volume. And also there was a certain amount of inflammation that was going to occur, plasma, um, and just like a fluid density buildup that was gonna make me look really puffier than my final results. But it still, it wasn't that bad. So my face just felt kind of swollen, maybe a little bruised, but I think what was more painful than my face was the area that they had liposuctioned the fat from my abdomen. And it wasn't anything terrible. I was actually like working out about 48 hours later, but it was the only part of me that turned like green, blue, purple. And I also had to massage that area to make sure I didn't have any um, connective tissue cysting up. And that part was like a little painful, sort of like a, like a lymphatic drainage massages, uh, massaging the tissue to make sure it healed correctly. But otherwise this was like super easy. I just looked a little puffy um, for the first couple of days, which you're going to see all of my after footage. Uh, and I'm just letting you know, I'm a complete mess and I like to make fun of myself. But really, after the first, you know, 48 hours, I could start to see the results by day three. By day five and by day 10, I could imagine exactly what my final results were gonna look like. And I loved every single day just being closer and closer to that heel. Um, and it was just very obvious to me, you know, that I was, going to heal really, really well, and I, I just loved it. So even though the healing process can be jarring for any kind of plastic surgery, or for any kind of cosmetic procedure, right? Like your lips bruise when you get filler, um, for eyebrows, they look super dark immediately after, for plastic surgery, your face looks crazy and puffy. But again, by day five, I was like, oh, I know where this is going, and I like it. I felt like the second week of healing, I pretty much already looked healed. That's how quick this process was for me. Again, I was working out like 48 hours later. By the end of the month, I looked fully healed. And I would say I wasn't 
fully, fully healed till about month three when I noticed a little bit of volume loss from that initial one month. Um, but here I am a whole year later and my volume restoration is so much more significant than my loss. So I really feel like I benefited a thousand and ten percent from having this procedure and despite my active lifestyle despite my high metabolism i still had amazing results thanks to my amazing surgeon i'm just going to include all of the raw video footage from my healing process i documented it pretty well day by day you'll see that at the end of this video or in a separate post i haven't figured that out yet but just to kind of wrap it up uh in conclusion my final thoughts was this was my first experience into plastic surgery and it was on my face and it couldn't have gone any better for me. I sincerely adore Dr. Madiki and his entire team. Um, I still keep in touch with them. I'm definitely going back in like three to five years to probably do it again. And one of the benefits as you age, your metabolism will slow down and you'll probably metabolize through the fat even slower. So the procedure will last longer for you as you age. How great is this? Um, so if you're interested, go get a consult at the very least. Um, for me, this really went well. I knew exactly what I wanted. I trusted myself going into this process. I had a lot um, very detailed and laid out for me and I found a really good surgeon and I trusted them too. So I think that's a really important part is to also find a doctor who you trust and pay, pay for the Beverly Hills pay for a good doctor. Uh, don't cheap out here. It's your face. It's your look. Um, and I, I, I'm very proud of myself. I did really good with the choosing. <laughs> Okay, so that I want to say is everything. I hope I didn't forget anything, but if I did, please DM me, ask away. Maybe you've already freaking booked an appointment with Dr. Madiki. This video was really fun to make, and I know I delayed making it for a long time, but I think it's very fitting that this is like a whole year later. So again, you can see that to this day, I am loving my results. And if you have any aesthetic questions for me, even though I'm not a plastic surgeon, I feel like maybe I can lead you in the right direction about the small enhancements that can contribute to your confidence, that can contribute to you feeling good about yourself. Because again, I think great work doesn't change who we are. It makes us more of who we are. And we live in a wonderful time where we can do so much for ourselves. And beauty is one mode of self-expression that I've invested my entire career into and advocate for so strongly as a boost to your confidence. Please follow my page just to see what other kinds of crazy things I will be getting into or follow my work if you wanna see brows, eyeliner, and lips. My name is Kira Tai. Thank you again so much for watching.